Um, this is Padmasambhava, and this was originally a tanka, although the top and bottom spools have been taken off, the painting still remains. And Padmasambhava, firstly, since all of this art is religious art, Padmasambhava is one of the main players in Tibetan Buddhism for a couple reasons. Firstly, let's dissect his name. Padmasambhava, Padma means lotus, and the myth about Padmasambhava is that he was born out of a lotus over a lake. So this piece is actually telling a story. We can see the lake under him, and as he comes up, as the lotus comes up out of the lake, you can see on this vibrant lotus comes this teacher. He was born in northern India on the lotus, and he was known as sort of a mystic, but absolutely a teacher of Buddhism. And what was happening at the time was Tantric Buddhism, which is the type they practice in Tibet, was just getting started, and people were still clinging on to their old religions of Bon, and so the king, or the ruler of Tibet at the time, Trisang Detsen, needed a way to get the people of his nation to come together and practice Buddhism as a unified people. So he began the construction of a monastery. But he had some trouble going along the way. And every time they would start building up the monastery in the night, they would come back the next morning and it would all be ruined. All the work they had done that day was just gone. And so they called up Padmasambhava to see what was going on, because supposedly he could help out. And so he stayed there for a day, diagnosed the problem, and realized that what was happening was in the night, all the evil spirits, or not the evil spirits, sorry, all the spirits of the religions that were there before were not so keen on having Buddhism come in and take over all their practitioners, so they were, well, they were rejecting it. So Padmasambhava played the role of a negotiator in between the old religions of Bon and the other ones practiced at the time, and Buddhism. And he took some aspects of both, but created Tibetan Buddhism, which is what's practiced there now. And so Padmasambhava served as a great negotiator. This piece is um, really exemplary. This piece is exemplary, exemplary for you, whatever. Uh, <laughs> Emblematic, you mean, perhaps? Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, because we have teachers and Buddhas on the top. We also have a bodhisattva. We have the main figure in the middle, Padmasambhava. We have his consorts on the left and right. And on the bottom, sometimes they're protector deities, but these are the people who commissioned him to come in and help them out with their problems. This piece, I didn't pick it overall for its beauty, even though it does have some really nice features. Like, if you look from below, you can see that like, the gold in the piece really stands out, and there's gold patterning all along his clothing. It's hard to see unless you come in close, or if you look from below, at which point it shines. Anyway, so. That's the story of Padmasambhava, and I think we're going to go over to a Bodhisattva now. Right now this is Avalokiteshvara, and oh, no, it's not here, so I guess we're not doing Avalokiteshvara, but we are going on to another Bodhisattva, Tara. <laughs> and uh, thank you, and I do invite you to, as Bahish said, to come close uh -huh. and look at the gold um, from underneath. It is quite beautiful. Come over here. Like, it might seem silly. You don't do it at, at um, other museums, but all this artwork really it's, in a, in, it's not in a proper place right now. In a temple, this would be high up. So as people look at this and as they're uh -huh. worshiping, they're actually seeing it from this perspective. And if you do, you can see some of the gold and the shawl and on the crown uh -huh. and some of the leaves. So I invite you to. If I get down, I can't get back up from here. <laughs> <laughs> you can switch down. Assistance is, 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 yes. is offered we will here. help anyone up who gets down. Because remember, gold is used to, quote unquote, raise the spiritual value of a piece. Uh -huh. That's how they define the use of gold. Uh -huh. So it's a highlighter. Remember, your candles okay. or your butter lamps are below. Okay. The light is not coming from above. Okay. You're in a relatively darkened space. So it's high up. Yeah. Right. So the glow would come up and it would hit, and it would give you the feeling of depth, and also movement. This is that supposed one. to be a rainbow? Yes, that is a rainbow. I've also heard the idea that it's part of his aura, because mm -hmm. as we see, he has a halo around his head, he has a halo around his body, mm -hmm. and I've heard that it's the artist's <coughs> perception of a third halo that mm -hmm. someone said it's ah, almost about one of us. Right. And because you have such beautiful rainbows, 
in Tibet. That oh, is a right? wonderful imagery uh -huh. because it's something that all the people could connect to. So your body halo or your mandorla can be done with a rainbow. And it's distinctive and you will only find that in their art. You won't find that necessarily in Chinese oh. art of the same religious type. And this person was supposed to have been around when? <laughs> I think he was around in the 6th century. 7th. 7th century? 7th, 8th. Sorry. Close enough. That's a few hundred years in my friend. Yes. At least a thousand years ago. At least a thousand years ago. Old. Alright. Does everyone move on the green table? Yeah, um, if you follow me, I'm going to move on to a uh, female bodhisattva, and I'll explain what that is right over here. It might sound a little confusing. So that was 